Welcome back to my video series. My name is Dr. Kay Verde, and today we're going to be talking about the relationship between gastrointestinal flora and mental emotional health. Many people notice that they feel emotions in their gastrointestinal tract, whether it's extreme anxiety being perceived as nausea or butterflies in the stomach or anger being perceived as stomach pain and indigestion. This is why our gastrointestinal tracts are known as our second brains. Our gastrointestinal tracts are full of nervous tissue known as the enteric nervous system. And our brain directly communicates with this nervous system in our gastrointestinal tracts. Our GI tracts also make hormones and neurotransmitters which have been found to impact our mood and behaviors throughout the day. Now the collection of viruses, fungi, and bacteria that live in our gastrointestinal tract are collectively known as our microbiota. And our first exposure is typically on the day that we're born. As we're traveling through our mother's vaginal canals upon delivery, we're inoculated by the bacteria that lives in her vaginal canal. Babies who are born via C-section don't get this initial inoculation. And what we're finding is that it can have an impact on their lives later on if they're not inoculated in other ways. Other ways that we can get good gut flora is through eating fermented foods like yogurt and kimchi and sauerkraut or taking probiotic supplements. Certain things can throw our gut flora out of balance and that includes drinking alcohol, taking antibiotics, or eating a very processed and high sugar diet. And when our gut flora is out of balance, we can start having symptoms of dysbiosis. And dysbiosis is when we have more harmful flora in our gastrointestinal tracts than beneficial flora. Symptoms include very smelly stools or gas, as well as bloating, constipation or diarrhea. And what we're gonna talk about today is changes with mood or behavior. So the role of beneficial gut flora is to first maintain mucosal health in our gastrointestinal tracts. And the mucosa is the inner lining of our gastrointestinal tracts that's involved with absorbing nutrients and releasing toxins. Good gut bacteria also help metabolize certain drugs and carcinogens that we're exposed to in our environment. Most of the studies that have been done on gut flora and mental emotional health have been done on animal models. There's one study that was done on humans where they were looking at people who had major depressive disorder and they found that they exhibited symptoms of dysbiosis and they did this by breath testing which is a way of figuring out what kind of microbes you have in your gut. And they found that not only did they have breath testing results that indicated dysbiosis, but they also had lower levels of tryptophan. And tryptophan is a precursor to serotonin, one of the very important neurotransmitters for mood health. Things like selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors are a very popular antidepressant that help increase the levels of serotonin acting in our brains. After these patients were given probiotics, they not only had lower markers of dysbiosis through breath testing, but they had higher serum levels of tryptophan and they felt better. People suffering from major depressive disorder have also been found to have higher levels of circulating cortisol, which is also known as the stress hormone in our bodies. And it's because there's a dysfunction in the HPA axis which is also known as the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. And basically it's a fancy way of saying that their brain's response to stress is changed so that they start secreting stress hormone at higher levels throughout the day than other people. And when you think about it, it makes sense. If you're really depressed and you're not feeling happy with your life, and your, your circumstances, you're more likely to perceive things as stressful throughout the day. So antidepressant treatment with SSRIs, for example, have been found to reduce the circulating level of cortisol um, throughout the bodies of depressed people. What one study found was that bifidobacterium, a specific type of beneficial gut flora, also had the ability to reduce circulating cortisol levels. 
So another study done on major depressive disorder broke patients up into two different groups. One that would receive a placebo and another one that would receive a probiotic supplement throughout the duration of treatment. And they measured uh, levels of urinary cortisol throughout the treatment as well as quality of life scales to determine their symptoms of major depressive disorder and the amount of perceived stress in their lives. And they found that the individuals who were on probiotics not only had decreased cortisol levels in their urine by the end of the study, but they also had reduced symptoms of major depressive disorder and improved quality of life. Now cortisol has a lot of different effects on our gastrointestinal health. Specifically with gut flora though, it changes the environment of our gastrointestinal tract so that our body is favoring the growth of pathogenic dysbiotic flora and it's less likely that beneficial flora will survive. What really interests me about probiotics and our mental emotional health is that there is a bi-directional relationship. So although a lot of research is learning that the type of bacteria in our gastrointestinal tract can interact with our brain and create certain mood conditions or behavior, they're also finding that our brain and, and the thoughts that we're thinking and the emotions that we're feeling can actually impact what kind of bacteria is growing in our gastrointestinal tracts. And this may be through the vagus nerve, which is the nerve that connects our gastrointestinal tracts with our brain. And people who perceive higher amounts of stress and anxiety may be signaling this through their vagus nerve, and it could be putting their gastrointestinal tracts in a constant state of stress. The bidirectional relationship between gut flora and the brain has been confirmed through multiple animal studies. I don't have time to go into the specific studies today, but I'll summarize by saying that animals who were either given antibiotics or whose gut flora were completely wiped out exhibited more symptoms of depression than uh, animals with healthy gut flora. They also found that when animals were re-inoculated with healthy gut flora, they exhibited the same healthy responses to stress as animals with healthy gut flora. Finally, they found that animals who had dysbiotic flora in their gastrointestinal tract also exhibited more symptoms of anxiety and depression. In human studies, they've also found that humans with lower levels of pathogenic bacteria that aren't necessarily enough to create symptoms also had more anxiety and depression, which researchers believe is conveyed through the vagus nerve as we discussed earlier. When I'm working with my patients who struggle with anxiety and depression, oftentimes I do look at their gastrointestinal health to determine if I do need to provide treatment to any specific part of their gut. And oftentimes probiotics does become part of their treatment plan. But I don't think it just ends at taking probiotic supplements. I think that with the type of lifestyle that we have today where it's high stress and we have a lot of demands, it's important that we cultivate a way to respond to the stress in a healthy way so that we can make sure that our gastrointestinal tracts and our gut flora aren't responding to this stress in an unhealthy way. And so my favorite recommendation to my patients is for them to start a meditative practice because meditating really allows you to um, detach yourself from your stress response and look at the world objectively and determine a healthy way to respond to stressors um, or aggravators in your life. I hope that you found this video helpful. Please leave any questions or comments that you have below and stay tuned for next week when we'll be talking about what I look for in a good probiotic. If you want to check out any of the studies, uh, go ahead and look in the information section. I have linked all of them for you.